Well, all right, so here's the quiz, and this is for a free drink. What year was that song popular, and what's the name of the song? Pour Some Sugar on Me. Pour Some Sugar on Me, what year? 1987, free drink. Well done. So 1987, wow. I was 15 years old, and what a great year it was. I think back, puberty had finally hit. Actually, I'd gotten past that awkward point in time where I was maturing and my voice didn't crack anymore. My, my physique had went from being a scrawny, sort of weird, uncomfortable guy to something that started to show some muscles. Something I could be a little bit more proud of instead of embarrassed by. Now some of you are saying, what happened? And I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> so in the US, where I grew up, at the age of 15, it's, an, it's a critical age because that is a time when you are able to take driver's training. And then at 16, you can get your license. The interesting part was, of course, I was going through this driver's training but I was about a year younger than most of my classmates and colleagues. Apparently, I was pretty intelligent back then, and so I had started class and, and started school a bit earlier, so all of my friends were already driving. What did this mean? They could go on dates, they could drive on dates legally, and I would either have to chase girls that were old enough and had their own <laughs> license so they could take me out, or I would have to go ride my bike somewhere that was in close proximity so that we could meet at that special location. How cool is that? <laughs> Not. <laughs> so one of the things that I was very blessed with, uh, around a good group of friends, I was quite athletic, and so we used to get together quite frequently at a place, it was called Tyler Field, and it was a football field, it was a football oval, this was for gridiron football. And at this field, there was also a gym. And the gym was just a place where weights were. And, and so a group of guys would pretty much go there every night, if, poss if, if possible. It was as much social as it was productive, but I went there religiously. So I was there one evening. Uh, it was in the afternoon. And my, of course, I rode my bike there. My friend Steve showed up. Steve had drove his dad's car, and Steve decided to go for a run around the lake that was not too far from our community. Steve had drove his dad's car, and when he left, he left the keys in the ignition and the windows open. <laughs> not being able to resist my ability, I guess my propensity to be a bit of a clown, when Steve left, I thought, I'm going to take a joyride. So I got in the car, and I went around. It was a quarter-mile cinder asphalt track. I went around. It was only a 30-second ride, no harm done. And I quite enjoyed the dust that it kicked up and, of course, the applaud and the laughter that I got from all my mates. So I meticulously backed the car back into the spot where it was so that when Steve came back, he would not realize the shenanigan that I had just done with his father's car. Everything seemed fine. Fifteen minutes later... A local police officer pulls into the driveway and he says, I've had a report that I need to check out. There was a retirement community just across the street from the field and an old lady had called in and said, those little boys are over there raising hell and racing cars. You should go check it out. Well, of course, we denied everything. We were just a bunch of jocks enjoying working out. But he wouldn't buy that story. In fact, he was willing and he was committed to staying there and interrogating each one of us until he actually found the truth. One of the underclassmen, one of the underclassmen who was also there succumbed to the pressure. <laughs> and he revealed, it was him! <laughs> and that was the genesis of when things went downhill. He was well and truly pissed off because we had wasted his time and he wanted to make a statement. So he ushered me into the back of his car, 15 years old, like a convicted felon, and brought me home. And now imagine my mother and father, the joy they had when they see their son being delivered back to home in the back of the car. 
But he was determined that he was going to make an example of me. He was going to teach me a lesson. And he just really wanted to, to express, you know, how wrong this was. So he told my parents, I hope you're proud. Your son is a professional liar and a thief. Whew. Wow. Things didn't get much better from there because he also wrote me a ticket for reckless driving. <laughs> now, I didn't have my license yet. That's a problem. So things continued to go downhill. I got kicked out of driver's training. That was number one. That was going to delay my ability to get my license even further. My buddy Steve, the, the, the one who had the car, his father wasn't too impressed. And so he decided uh, he would threaten me with a, a, a suit of Grand Theft Auto. That's nice for a 15-year-old. But worse than all that, my mom and dad put a scarlet letter on me for the next 10 years as a thief and a liar. Ouch. I remember, you know, they say uh, crisis is, you know, character isn't created in, in crisis, it's revealed. And I kind of believe that, but boy, this, this was not a fun part of that journey. My father said to me, and this probably tore me up more than anything, he said, you know, Troy, your mistakes and your failures as a son are probably more of a result of my failures as a father. Ouch. With a tear in his eye, he said, I really thought I raised you better than that. Ouch. You know, I'd, I don't know about you, but I would have rather gotten 50 lashes on my bare butt cheeks than to disappoint my parents. That was hard. The following day, after dad and mom had some time to think about what the punishment would be, my father said, come on, we're going for a ride. We went into to his car. The ride was eerily silent, silent for about 20 minutes. He pulled over and he said, you know, Troy, a lot of people look, look for the difficulty and opportunity. I want you to look for the opportunity in this difficulty. Long pause. I trust that you'll take this and you'll become the person that you're capable of being. It was from that point that I decided I was, I was going to take any mistake I'd ever made and use it as a springboard rather than a hammock. So it wasn't easy, but I spent some time really doing some self-reflection. There's many, many life lessons I'd like to share with you, but I don't have the time, but I want to leave you with three. First of all, Age is the price that we pay for maturity. 